is the, one of the okay. biggest pieces so that I've heard. It can't be counterfeited at all. It has, it has never been done. Okay. And the, so here's how it works. But, so but, but however, whoever owns it, owns it, right? Whoever's got their, their hands on Ownership is an interesting question. Okay. So it's public key cryptography. Right. So there's a public key yeah. and a private key. Yeah. And the public key is your receive address. Yes. Yeah. Right, so anyone can you can publish this. You can, if I want you to pay me, I can tell you the address right. to send your mm-hmm. bitcoins, and then they'll arrive. Yeah. However, to spend them, yeah. you need your private yeah. address, and that's the one you keep secret. Right. So there's no actual ownership as such. There's public key that you can receive, private key that you can send, and all of the bitcoins, everyone's bitcoins, are in one ledger called the blockchain. Right. Okay. So yeah. so that's so it's actually not anonymous. There's a there's a rumor that the right. bitcoins are anonymous, but the owner of the addresses is anonymous, but the actual transactions are not right. anonymous. So, so, and that's that's the piece that everybody has. That's the piece that's global. I'll, I can look at I can look at the entire ledger of transactions yes. Yes. from the beginning of time, essentially, exactly. right? Yes. Okay. And the, so then, so, what, so explain the two security aspects that you were worried about. Right. Counterfeiting. Yeah. They can't be counterfeited because because I've got the private key. Um, that's a separate thing. The the address is actually effectively the ownership of the Bitcoins, right, who owns right. what, right? right? But the actual Bitcoins themselves are a cryptog- cryptographic function right. that has been created by the miners. Um, and the miners bless each... Um, every 10 minutes, the, um, the miners perform a calculation which uh, finds, uh, effectively gives them more Bitcoins, but also... Um, cryptographically signs all of the transactions that have just happened okay. in the last few minutes. All right, so, so, so it's a delta every 10 minutes. There's so a delta that goes across. It, it, yeah, it's approximately every 10 minutes. Sometimes right. it's Whatever. every one minute, sometimes every 20 minutes. Right. But, it's, but it, be, it means that every transaction in the world gets given to the miners and then they stamp it with their seal of approval right. and it goes in the blockchain. Right. So that, and, and because it keeps adding these blocks right. to the blockchain, you can't undo transactions that have right. already been done. Right. And it also means that if you wanted to falsify or forge a transaction, you'd actually not only have to go back and change that record, yeah, change but every records. subsequent record, which means it's practically impossible to do. Right. It's like no one has that much computing power. Right. So, n- no one has. And the right. computing power of all the um, Bitcoin miners around the world is now the largest uh, com- supercomputer so in the world. How many miners are there? I mean, as it's um, well, hundreds of thousands. Okay. So hundreds of thousands well, miners, Bitcoin miners. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're just you and me. They're just right, people. Right. Although, they're probably people that got into Bitcoin early and have made some money on it. Uh, because mining is rewarding, right. so there's an incentive system in there for people to mine, but the miners are not only creating bitcoins that they get to spend, so that's their reward, but they're also effectively authenticating the transactions. That right, so they, well, they have two functions then. One is yeah. actual uh, currency management, right? So they're increasing the amount of currency, right? So if that goes too fast, that, you have, you have um, issues, the, right? the miners don't um, create the currency. The miners get given it as a reward for... Authenticating the transactions. Okay, so there's a, so there, there's the a service they provide that are getting paid for. Effectively, yes. right, right, right. And there's also um, a slight nuance is that every transaction has a tiny mm-hmm. transaction fee in it right. to the miners. Right, right, right. So that when the Bitcoin flow stops being given as reward, they still have an incentive to keep authenticating the transactions. Right, right, right. So by the time Bitcoin gets huge um, and the Bitcoin rewards have gone down for the miners, they're still doing it. Right, right. Because there's enough value to There's it. enough value so in what, the transaction. So, what, so what's stopping it from becoming, uh, or nothing? Is it just uh, inertia? It becoming a, a large enough currency? Because it's essentially becoming a currency on its own. Yeah. So it, it's, it's weird because it's a currency and an asset right, at right. the same time. And so it, it suffers the problem of an asset of, you know, um, a highly volatile pricing right, 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 compared right. to um, existing currency. Right. Um, but it is also a currency because you can buy things with it. So yeah. imagine if you could carry gold yeah. and that when you wanted to buy things with it, you could just chip off a bit of your gold <laughs> and pay for stuff. Yeah. So that's effectively what it is, except it's, you know, electronic. Right. It's by, it, you know, it's, you can email it or SMS right, right, it. Right, right, you know, right. you can send it any way you want. It's just a series of numbers. and. Letters. So what's the biggest problem it's having right now? I personally believe the biggest problem is acceptance. But acceptance, though, is only based upon the fact that I trust it, right? So now you're giving me some more information about trust, right? So that's that's a... See, the, the, the technology Bitcoin is designed so that you don't need to trust it. It works. No, and it but emotionally I have to trust it. Emotionally, you So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you're teaching me something about it where I go, okay, I'm going to go play with this a little bit. Um, the users aren't the problem because there's plenty of users. Right. The, the problem are the merchants. Right. You need to get big merchants to use it. All right. So, so you need to get... It's an adoption problem. It's an adoption problem. Right. And those, they're scared because governments 
probably don't like it. And there's a good reason why governments well, don't like it. Right? Yeah. So, well, I mean, it's true. It's there are use thing. cases for it. There are places in the world that, where they either don't have a good government so or, <laughs> or um, um, there are places in the world where um, they don't have a banking system. Yeah. You know, there's, a large, there's a, at least a billion people in the world that don't have a bank account. Right. Uh, and, you know, M-Pesa in, in um, parts of Africa is used because people don't have bank accounts right. and people don't have reliable methods. They don't have credit cards. They don't have ways of sending. So in those places... The stability of financial institutions is also the other piece of that puzzle. Yeah, so, that, so in those use cases... Yeah. it's a given, it's way better than what they have. Yeah. And then in the places where we do have a banking system, we do have credit cards, then you have governments that probably don't want an alternate currency being used because the governments like to control their currencies oh, no. and print more whenever they want yeah. and so on. And, and Monetary uh, systems are a big deal. So so you don't want to yeah, stabilize it with, with somebody else coming in and playing in your sandbox, right? And also, the, yeah, well, um, there's, a, there's massive inflation with normal currencies mm-hmm. because they just print more whenever yeah, they need right. some. Uh, whereas with Bitcoin, it's the opposite. There's deflation right. because demand exceeds supply. Right. And so you can more or less, you can't guarantee, but you can more or less expect that over a period of time, the Bitcoins will go up because the more users of Bitcoins, there's not more Bitcoins around. There's only there's a, there's a schedule, a fixed schedule for how many will be issued ever. And so as demand exceeds supply, the, the price goes up and it keeps going up. So actually, there's a lot of hoarding of Bitcoins and there's a lot of people investing. You know, VCs have now yeah, started yeah, to invest that, right. in, mm-hmm. in Bitcoins. Even, you know, I think even Peter Thiel and the founders yeah, funders yeah, yeah. have invested in Bitcoin companies. Yeah. So I saw that at one point uh, Amazon started accepting Bitcoin as a, as a currency. I don't know. So what, what has happened? I, I would like Amazon to, you know, that would be... Uh, I, you need to start getting Amazon, Google. You yeah. need to start getting the big players. To start I, either to either they were considering or did accept it. PayPal, I, I don't think PayPal has said... Um, their CEO has said that they like Bitcoin, but they haven't mm-hmm. said they're going to accept it. And Amazon, you can't use Bitcoin directly on Amazon right now, but you mm-hmm. can buy gift cards using Am- using Bitcoins and, and then, then spend the Bitcoins Bitcoin. on Amazon. So mm-hmm. you can do it, but not in an not easy directly. way. Not directly. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not, not where directly. it should be. It's not mm-hmm. where it, it, one day, fingers crossed, it will actually be easy to spend them on, on you know, good places like Amazon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, well, thank you very much. I learned funny. a lot about. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. I found the guy. Yeah. I found the guy I was telling you about. Okay, hopefully, I know him. Uh, <laughs> I, he might be a fraud, so I'm okay. not. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. <laughs> See, I, really, uh, I, I, I typically don't have to worry about that. 